Hey, boys and girls, Jeff here with the Common Sense Camper. Stella, no, no. Nope. Come, come. Stella, come, come. Stella, come, come. She's like dangerously close to that cliff. <laughs> I, I would hope that she knows better, but she's only seven, seven months old. So yeah, now, now she's like banging on my leg. I think she realized, oh, there's a little bit of a drop off down there. So uh, the other day I watched a video uh, from Frozen at Outdoor Adventures. And if you haven't seen his channel, go check him out. He's a really, really good guy. Uh, he did a through hike of the Appalachian Trail and uh, he, had it, he had a purpose uh, for doing that. And it was, one, it was one of those things, you know, where I gotta go find myself and I won't ruin the ending. Uh, but there was another reason and it was, absolutely amazing it was, it was a really cool thing and he's got some really good solid tips on lightweight and ultralight backpacking but he did a video the other day about the whole this whole covid thing and people uh more and more people becoming depressed and and i get it uh you know when you lose your job lose a business you lose your house whatever it may be you know a loss is a loss and sometimes you, you get stuck in yourself, you know, and, and you, you start just doubting all your decisions and, you know, you don't want to make any decisions moving forward. Uh, and the reason I can speak on this is in 2009, it was actually March. I actually remember it. <laughs> March of 2009, uh, I'm in the construction industry. And I lost my job. That's when the you know the market crashed, the housing industry just basically imploded. And I remember just sitting there after a week with the you know you go through all these emotions. You, you go through you know sadness and then doubt. Uh, you start thinking, well, what did I do wrong? Am I am I not good enough? You know you go through parts where you're pissed you're, you're angry you know you want to lash out at somebody and there's really no one there to lash out at and so I understand it I get it and there's a lot of people that are in that same situation a lot of you are staying at home probably watching the news sitting there eating things that you're not supposed to eat or shouldn't eat and you're just in a downward spiral. I think part of that is necessary. Uh, I don't think long term it's a good thing. But I can tell you this: it's sometimes you got to reach the bottom of the barrel to find your way back up. You know, when you're kind of swimming around in the middle of the barrel, you're not really sure where you are. And you're like, oh, this is kind of comfortable, and I feel okay. But once your feet hit the bottom of that barrel. Man, either, either you bail out or you just, you're done. And it's not a fun thing to go through. And there's a lot of people that are becoming diagnosed as clinically depressed. Now, the part with Frozen and Outdoor Adventures is he said, you know, get out and hike. And I had a couple people that no, I, I follow him, they email me and they're like, that's not gonna cure depression and it's not, I, I, don't, I don't think he ever said it was gonna cure depression. Uh, I'm not saying it's gonna cure depression. But what I can tell you is this. will help you more get healthy than it will sitting on your couch watching depressing news and eating junk food. Now, some of you are saying, well, that's easy for you to say because you go out in the outdoors, you know what you're doing. Well, some of you might not say that if you've seen all my videos, but you say, hey, you know what you're doing. You've got the, the gear, you've got the knowledge, you've got the skills. What I'd say to that is, 
Guys, all I'm doing is I'm walking. I'm walking in the woods. That's all I'm doing. Uh, there's no special skill required with that. You know, in fact, today, all I have is my dog, my fanny pack, and one trekking pole. I'm just walking. So if you're someone that's sitting there, you're depressed, don't know what to do, get up, grab a bottle of water, drink it first, prehydrate, very important. Just go walk. If you're not a big person into, you know, if you're not big into athletics or you're someone that's like, hey, I, I haven't even climbed a set of stairs in 10 years, just start out small. Go eighth of a mile one day, you know, wait a couple days, walk another eighth mile, set up a plan to say, hey, every day that's nice out, I'm going to go out and walk. The next thing you know, you're going to be at the point where you're now walking five, six miles a day after work and you're not even thinking about it. Another thing is probably the best thing that ever happened to us here recently, especially with the whole COVID thing, was that little girl right there. She has really diverted our attention from all this COVID nonsense and kept myself busy. You know, my youngest son, he's 15, he's in high school. Uh, he plays football, he boxes. And he hasn't been able to do anything. He's working out in the house, doing classes online. My oldest son, who's 19, is home from Ohio University. And so, you know, he's missing that whole first year experience of college. And with her, it's really boosted our spirits. Now, I'm not encouraging anyone to go out and get a puppy, but find something that clicks, especially if you have a family. Find something that clicks with all of them, whether it's you know, canoeing, kayaking, fishing, boating, uh, hunting, hiking. You know, hiking's easy. And, and the reason hiking is easy is, like I said, you're just, you're walking. That's all you're doing. Uh, you're just walking on a trail or you're walking on your street. It is amazing the things that will go through your head and won't go through your head when you're out just walking around, especially in a, in a setting like this. It's it's gorgeous out here today. It's it's about 60 degrees. Uh, with the breeze, it's probably about 56, 57. You know, I just have a light hoodie on, uh, shorts, my hiking shoes, my trail shoes. And I'm just walking with Stella, talking to you guys. You know, and I'd say I'm probably two thirds of the way through this trail already, just you know, the little bit of time that uh, I've been in here. So I, I, I sympathize, I empathize with those of you who lost your jobs, lost your businesses. You know, there's people who are losing their houses, they're losing their cars, you know, and it just reminds me of 2009 all over again. And then I'll, I'll, I'll be the first one to tell you it's horrible. It sucks. Uh, I would not want to go through that again. But the place I'm at right now, I would be lying if I didn't say it was because of that adversity that I went through. You know, if you're on top all the time, uh, you're going to become stagnant. You're not going to be willing to change. And going through that was, I'll be honest, it was brutal. Uh, I was so out of my head. Uh, and uh, no one outside my family know, knows the story. I'm going to share it with you because I have a feeling there's some people here that really, really need to hear this. Stella, no! Come, come! She absolutely just bolted. Huh? What are you doing? <laughs> I don't know what she's doing. She just took off running. Well, I don't know what's down there. It's water. So, oh, she just took off running for something. That was a good girl though, she stopped. So, uh, I had lost my job, I was laid off. And it was a, you know, a job I, I, I loved. I, I mean, 
I was making good money and top of my game or at least getting to the top of my game. And I decided that to be smart, I have no idea what she's doing. This is what we call crazy time. I, there's probably, she doesn't like flies or gnats or anything that flies. She goes nuts in the house. Like I'll just hear on the window <laughs> and it's her trying to get to a fly. So back to the story. So I decided the, the right thing to do would be to sell the house. And I, you know, obviously I talked to my wife about it. She was not happy about it. I explained to her that, hey, I'm in the construction industry, you know, and, well, I didn't explain that to her. She already knew that. But I explained to her that I was very fear, fearful that this construction industry was not going to recover. And I, I, there's nowhere for me to go. I mean, I, I called every single person I, I knew in the business. I called in every favor with every top person I could think of in, in the construction business. And no one was hiring. Developments were shut down. There's houses that, ah. Oh. Oh, well, this will be fun. <laughs> so tell me, how is it? No. How is it I've had two labs? No, stop drinking it. I've had two labs. Heated water. I get a, a Norwegian elk hound. And this dog absolutely loves water. I, I just, it baffles me. All right, let's get out of here. Come on, you're a mess. Well, I'm glad I got my seat cover for the back seat. All right, back to the story, I know, sorry. Uh, so I decided that the right thing to do would be to sell the house. Just, you know, we weren't in trouble. I had, I had saved for a rainy day. Stella, come, come. I had saved for a rainy day. We were good for about 11 months and, but I thought, you know what? I don't want to drain all that out, you know? And then I said, you know, we'll just downsize. We'll keep, we'll keep in the same school district. Stella, come, 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 come. She's absolutely out of control. <laughs> so I was going to downsize. So I talked to a realtor that I knew. He comes out, praises, looks at the house, says, you know, here's what I'm gonna list it for. And really, we weren't gonna make a lot of money on it. One, because the market crashed, and two, I really hadn't been in it that long. I built it myself, so I had some equity in it, but with the market crash, that kind of dissolved quickly. So, he said, all right, we we'll sign the paperwork, we're gonna list it. I come home from a whole day's worth of trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start my own business. Am I gonna get another job? And at the time, I was just doing odd jobs at the time. And I come home and my wife looks at me and she's like, you need to go talk to Cole. Now I'm gonna preface this with the fact that I am terrible with dates. I can't remember my anniversary. I can't remember, heck at times it's hard for me to remember my own birthday. So I'm bad with dates, horrible with dates. So with saying that, you can probably guess where I'm going with this. So I get home, my wife gives me that lesson. Please look. Oop. She says, you need to go talk to your son. And I go, why, what's going on? She goes, well, he came home from school and my realtor had put a sign in the front yard and he put balloons on it. Well, my son came home, saw that. At first, when he saw the balloons, he got very excited. And then he realized what it was. It was a realtor sign that we were selling the house. 
And unfortunately, that was also his birthday. When my wife explained to me what I had done, I, to this day, I, I'm, I'm heartbroken over that, that, that I was so wrapped up in my own issues, my own problems, that I didn't look ahead. I didn't look at the big picture. And the big picture is yourself in relationship with your family, yourself in relationship with friends, yourself with your relationships with coworkers. Those cannot be divided. Those are all one big picture. And with the ugliness going on right now, I think that's the biggest issue is everyone's looking at themselves and they need to look at themselves in unison with everyone else that matters in their lives. It's just like when I walk in the woods, for, apologize for the sun, don't get that much. Don't get, you don't get that much in Ohio like this. One of the things I love to do is walk in the woods, and I've probably said this a million times on my videos, I love to walk in the woods. Oh, there's a deer right over there. Hold on, I'm gonna turn this around so you can see it. So, I don't know, unless the deer. Uh, I forgot where I was at. Yeah, I don't remember where I was at for the deer. But anyways, just, oh, the woods. So when I come in here, you know, you make noise when you're walking, you're breathing, animals smell you, and things kind of get quiet. And then if you stop and just wait like 10 minutes, you'll, you'll see, you'll feel and hear all that nature close in back around you. And right now, I think our country needs some more of that. <laughs> uh, right now, we are running through the woods, clanging pans and pots and screaming and, you know, whistling and making all kinds of noise. Um, look at me. Look what I'm doing. Help me. Ready? Break. Go. Go. Uh, no, don't all over me. Go in the water. No, in the water. There you go. <laughs> She loves her brakes. Break. Good girl. Good girl. Oh no. Oh my. No, don't drink the water. Yuck. No. Go, go, go. Oh my. Oh. Oh. Glad I didn't clean my truck today. Oh, you're insane. No, don't drink it. No. Uh. Oh, you're a mess. You're a mess. All right, come, come. Stella, come, come. No, come, come. Good girl. Now she's going to want to jump all over me, probably. Stella, come, come. Good girl. All right. Heel. Heel. Hey. Good girl. Heel. Nope. Heel. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> 